Hello, my name is Joe, and in this course, I'm going to take you through how to create photogrammetry models for films, TV, and games. If you find this helpful, please like and subscribe and hit that bell for more videos. And don't forget to check out my website, 3dassetlibrary.com, for Unreal and Unity Engine assets. Also, if you find this helpful, please check out my Patreon below for exclusive content relating to photogrammetry, games. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to export our um, mesh here into Blender or whatever program you're using, Maya, etc. Um, we're then going to reset the uh, position of the boot back to zero or near enough zero. Obviously, if you've done this before, this is nothing new to you, but I'm going to try and sort of explain it in such a way that it's um, quick and to the point, but will help those that haven't done it before. So what we'll do is we'll right click on chunk, export model, and we'll give it a name. So we'll name it boot. And you've under the save type, you've got all these different file types. Um, here, I'm going to use FBX. It might be best if you use FBX um, as well, just so that we're the, um, the same when we're doing the tutorial. And we'll press save. You'll get this pop up here. And by default, include comments, tick, just untick that. This, I think, I be believe, allows you to basically say this was made by 3D Asset Library so that if people find it in the file, they can say, oh, that's who made it. Maybe they've got some more stuff. Um, these two here, we don't really need to use. Um, as far as I'm aware, there's nothing here that requires an alpha channel. What we also want to do is untick the cameras. This will show us all the camera positions in um, our scan inside the 3D software. We have no real need for that. Um, obviously, if you do, tick it. Um, the important part really is this. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to export the texture from this, but then we're going to delete it. Now, you might think, well, why don't we just untick it? What will do? What will happen is if we untick it, that won't export the UV map out. Now, the UV map, for those that don't know, is basically a flattened um, version of our boot, which then the texture is applied to. And without that, what would happen is if we didn't have that, it would be an absolute mess. The boot wouldn't. None of the you know we might have the a bit of the Levi stretched across here, and the laces might be on the heel, and you know it'd be absolute chaos. So it's very important that we export this. Doesn't matter which one we choose here because we're going to delete it. <clears throat> so what we'll do is we'll press OK, and that's going to export our model out. And what we'll do is we'll go here, see here, this is our texture map that I was just talking about. So this is our UVs, you can see it's all being squished out, you can see the Levi there, we can see the boot here, um, our bits of laces and another bit of laces over here. Um, this is what's generated from Metashape, I believe Alice Vision and Zephyr and all that do the same thing, they'll generate their own. And um, you can... Actually, later on, I'll show you how to import your own UV map so that for people that, you know, are experienced today will know how to tidy this up um, the way they want, you know. And um, so what we'll do is we'll just delete this. So we want to delete that texture. <coughs> Go back to Metashape and right-click on Chunk, Export Texture. So the reason I um, deleted that original texture and export from here is because, A, you can... Uh, choose what file format you want. So if you want to get more detail, you've got these these here. Um, I believe EXR is very high quality, TIFF and Targa are. And um, also you can export the occlusion map from this and also things like a normal map, um, which I'll show you a, a bit later. I think that's probably more unique to Metashape um, because obviously you have things like Alice Vision and they will do it differently. But what I'll do is I'll probably do a little section that says um, Metashape uh, tips or tricks or something like that so that you can go straight to those if you're just using Metashape. So what we'll do is we'll give it a name. So boot, um, diffuse. Diffuse is your sort of where all the color information is. So when we look here, all these all this sort of texture that we're seeing here, red and the stitching and the black and all that, that's essentially a diffuse map or a base color. Um, and then what I do is I like to select Targa because Targa's, I think from memory, what Unreal prefers to use and Unreal is what predominantly I work in. So we'll press save. And then we've got here texture type. And you see here, we've got two, two types here currently. So we'll select diffuse map, okay. So that's gonna export our texture. And then we'll go back again, chunk, right click, export, texture and we'll just drop that down and we've got boot and then we'll name this AO for ambient occlusion and then my save type is uh, target. Save, drop down this and select occlusion map. Press OK. So now we've created our two textures here. We've got our ambient occlusion and our diffuse and our boot. So we've done all that. So what we're going to do next is we're going to go into something uh, like your Blender or if you're using Maya or 3D Studio, etc. And then we're going to apply these textures and um, reset the position of the boot on the grid. So let's head on to the next part.
So now what we're going to do is we're going to import our boot into uh, Blender here or 3D Studio, etc. So um, as I say, what I've done here is I've tried to keep mine um, as similar to yours as possible. Um, I've reset this back to the Blender defaults, but there might be a slight variation, um, obviously depending on what version you're using, but it's the same principles. This isn't going to be a full-blown how to model in Blender course if you want to do that. Obviously, there's plenty of videos on YouTube. Um, if it's little things you're stuck on, please feel free to contact me and I'll do my best to help you. But um, obviously, bear in mind, this is not a full-blown Blender uh, modeling course. So what we'll do is we'll just, if you haven't already, if you left click, that'll bring out this marquee tool and we'll just select all three of these here and delete. So then what we want to do is go to File, Import, FBX. And then we want to navigate to our window, so this will pop up, so we'll navigate to where our boot is, so it was on a second window, and we'll select our boot. So obviously because this is, uh, I think it's over a million polygons, this is just going to take a little, um, about 30 seconds to load in, obviously depending on your computer, that may, may vary, if you've got a super fast one it may take seconds, if you've got a super slow one it may take five minutes. So then what we've got here is we've got our boot. So to move the camera, if you hold on the middle mouse button or the push in on the middle rolly wheel, if you haven't got a middle mouse button, that will allow you to do this. Um, if you want to zoom in, you can roll the wheel and zoom out, obviously roll the wheel. And if you want to move, um, if you want to sort of uh, move around, um, you can hold shift and middle mouse button. So that will move you around like this. Now, what we want to do is obviously we want to try and center this. So what we can, what we've got up here is our gizmo. So if we switch into say, you can see here, if we click these, it locks you to the view that you're supposed to be, um, uh, th that's, sorry, that angle of the view. So it's saying that we're looking straight down flat on the y-axis and we can see here our boots, absolute chaos. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna um, try and center this. So what we'll do is we'll click on the boot and then we'll right click, set origin, origin to geometry. So what that's done is that's before our center point was here and now it's moved it to here, this little orange dot. So now if you press G on the keyboard, that will bring something up similar to this. Yours might move automatically. It's the same, fine, it's the same thing. And what we want to do is just turn on snapping, which is this little magnet here, and we're going to move it up. So there we go. Hold shift and middle mouse button to move the camera up. And that'll do. So then what we'll do is if we uh, press um, R on the keyboard, that's going to give you a rotation a gizmo, or again, yours might automatically rotate. Um, so what we'll do is we'll just rotate the boot around. And then what we'll do is we'll switch to our green view or whatever view, depending on your software, and then we'll just level, start leveling the boot out. Um, then what we'll do is press G again to move, move our boot, and then go to Z axis, the, the, the Z, uh, yeah, Z axis, and press R for rotate, and there we go. So we've basically straightened out our boot here. So now what we can do is if we um, press the mouse button here, the select box, that takes us back. So what we can do now is currently, this is obviously very shiny. So what we can do is if we click on the these up here, we've got different types here. We can say this is our wireframes. You see here we've got tons of polygons here. It's far too much um, for this. Um, this just shows us a sort of gray view and we want the viewport shading. So what this will do, this is when we apply our texture, we'll see our texture. So currently it's got no texture um, applied, our ones that we've um, exported. So what we're doing is gonna do is click on the boot, click on this little icon here, which is the material uh, properties icon. And it's saying here that we are waiting for our texture. So I'll just expand this out and try and show you what I can do here. So what we wanna do is it's looking for our base color here. So if we click on that, and go to image texture. This is gonna drop down this little field here and open that, and that's gonna bring us to our folder. So what we wanna do is our diffuse one. So what that'll do is straight away is we've got our um, our texture. Um, so, so as you can see, we've got our texture as I said, um, and then we've, I'm, I'm not gonna go into a full blown thing here, but we can say adjust our roughness so we can make the boot incredibly shiny or we can make it more like it was. Um, obviously, if you put this into something like a substance painter, we can make say the bottom of this more, um, look more like um, shinier and then we can make this look more like a fabric. But to be fair, this scans come out very well. So um, what we can do is if we change the roughness here and just put it back to, to non-shiny for the minute, that's, that's how it is in the software. Um, You've got things like your metallic here, so you can make it, um, oh, 
I didn't like that. So you can make it like a bit like a metal um, blended with uh, correct things. Um, so yeah, what what happens with this is when we obviously um, we've exported our texture, it doesn't hold any of the. Um, metallic or roughness value so metallic is exactly what it says like car metal um so it might be that you want to make these rings metal and then roughness is essentially how uh glossy or reflective it is um so that's what can bring a 3d scan alive is a lot of people will just scan stuff um a won't know how to do a full 360 degree scan and b they will just leave it at that i mean that's a great result you know if that's attached to someone's uh, foot you wouldn't really think anything of it but to get those extra details um that you should then take into something like a substance painter which I'll, I'll show you in a um in a little sort of snippet tutorial um how we can do that and then they'll apply things like an, on a leather effect to get that sort of leathery sort of shine and a fabric effect to get that sort of fabric look you know so then that that'll differentiate a a 3d scan from a, a great 3d scan you know so all those little things help bring your products alive that you're trying to scan and obviously if you're trying to sell the products help you sell them better um so that's your basic export a model out export the textures out and then apply them in blender obviously in 3d studio max um uh maya things like that it's slightly different but it's the same principle and depending on what renderer you're using um that can be slightly different as well um so what we'll do now is we'll look at some other features like decimation and um how to now bring this model down to something that's not um so high polygon and um more manageable for what we want to use so yeah let's move on to the next bit <laughs> 